back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about what I read in the month of September. Let's get started. In September I read a total of seven books. Some of them I really really liked. Some of them were the worst thing I've ever seen. So let's get started. I also really quickly just want to thank everyone who signed up for my Patreon. It means a lot to me. It means so much. I'm so glad and I'm so excited that I have so many people who are just just like the absolute fucking best like literally just the fucking best like thank you so much we're going to talk about these books in order of least favorite to most favorite the first book i'm going to talk about is clown in a cornfield by adam caesar oh yikes i don't like this before i say anything about this book i just need to make it very clear but I've got nothing against Caesar. I know that he's a person on this platform as well. This has nothing to do with him personally. I don't fucking know the guy. These are just my opinions and my criticisms on something that he released into the world. So anyway, this novel is about a girl who moves to a new town. She moves with her father. They arrive, you know, she starts at a new school. She gets along with the most popular group of people in the school. And at a party one night, the children at the party are attacked by a clown. And there just happens to be a cornfield nearby. <laughs> by the way, I also buddy read it with Sergio Gomez. I will leave his like Instagram uh, down below if you want to go follow him. I didn't hate it. Reading it, I was like, yeah, this is like really cliche. Yeah, I've seen this all done before. Yeah, the writing style leaves something to be desired. But either way, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate the book. I did have issues, of course, with the fact that the plot was taken from many different tropes and cliches. That was a bit annoying. The whole thing of like a girl moves to a new town. A girl moves to a new town and meets a really hot dude. A girl who moves to a new town and like becomes friends with these people that she like has nothing in common with but it's somehow they're all like really close suddenly. <laughs> like these things, these things are cliches especially in YA. So reading it I wasn't impressed by that but I wasn't angry. I thought it was a way for people who are younger or people who only read YA to really just like sort of relate to it even more because they would be used to that kind of plotting, that kind of storyline, right? And like I said, also, Caesar's writing is at times clunky and cringy. Like, it's not, <laughs> I don't wanna be mean, but at times I felt uncomfortable with the writing. At one point, there's like this sentence that, I forget what it was, but it had Cardi B and Ratchet in it. When I was reading that, I was just like, holy shit, like, Ooh, ooh. Like other areas, the writing was fine. The writing was like fucking Monday morning, dude. Like it was normal, it was fine. Other points though, the writing was just like, let's also talk about the clown <laughs> because I have some issues, slight issues with the clown. The clown is wearing a plastic mask. And like, this is like a tiny ass thing. Like this thing isn't like a critique of his writing style. This isn't a critique of the plot. This is just me in my personal preferences. The clown is wearing a plastic mask. This wasn't as scary. Had the clown been wearing like actual clown makeup, I think it would have been so much more scary. Had it been described as like running down their face or like being patchy or something, maybe the blood and the makeup had mixed together. Like that would have been so good. But instead it's just like a plastic mask. And to me personally, it's just like, it's not scary. It's not scary. What I did enjoy about the book was that Caesar didn't hold back from being gory. The slasher gory kill scenes are quite gory. There's a lot of like detail about exactly what's happening, how much blood, where they're being stabbed and stuff like that. It's really, really good. Those parts I was into. Those parts were just... Had the book been how I perceived it from the beginning all the way to the end, I probably would have gave this three stars. I probably would have been like, it's not the best thing in the world, but it's okay. It's fine. Like, whatever. But then the ending of the novel happens and I was just infuriated. <laughs> the cojones of this man. There might be slight spoilers, 
However, the spoilers do not ruin like the plot. It's literally the stupidest thing. It doesn't affect anything else in the story because it literally has nothing to do with nothing. It's got nothing to do with nothing. If you want to skip because you don't want any spoilers, like go to this timestamp. If you don't give a fuck and you don't really care about being spoiled on something that's not really important, then stick around because it's going to get fucking juicy, bitch. The entire novel, I felt like Caesar was gearing towards a romance between the main character and like the most popular dude. I forget their fucking names. Like who actually cares? I felt like he was building it up, right? Or he was building up some kind of love triangle between the main girl, the popular dude, and then like the ugly hick guy. I forget his name also. Runt? Russ? Rust? I forget his name. I was expecting there to be like some like romantic moment or whatever, you know, like, cause it's a YA novel, of course. He had put some development into the main character being with one of these two boys. But instead of doing that, Caesar was like, you know what? We need some gay representation in this book. So he has the popular hot dude and Russy or Pussy, whatever the fuck his name is, be together. Literally like, a chapter away from the end, these two male characters start making out and our main character is like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> this is my issue. It seems almost like a non-issue, like who cares, like whatever. But it is kind of an issue because it's the fact that Caesar felt no obligation to give these characters any development as queer thought that he could make them gay with no development, with no backstory, for no fucking reason, and have it as a twist. Because like, I'm sorry bitch, do you ever see a heterosexual plot twist? Do you ever see people being like, oh my god, he was straight the whole time? No, you don't fucking see that, because people don't fucking do that, because that's fucking stupid. Oh, it makes me so mad. <laughs> this like, representation is bullshit like it's fucking stupid don't put queer characters in your books if you're not going to develop them like at all these characters don't have any life to them whatsoever had caesar added something about the like attitude of the town had maybe caesar developed it so that there was like a air of homophobia or an air of silence about queer issues in this town then fucking A, dude, you fucking do it. You make those dudes kiss all you fucking want. But no, there was nothing. It was a plot twist. These boys' sexuality was a fucking plot twist. Like, it was the, it's like the stupidest thing I've ever fucking seen. And it infuriates me. It's lazy because he's put no work into these characters. And it's performative. He wants us to like clap him on the fucking back and be like, good job for giving a, like, thank you for representation. What person who is LGBTQ plus is sitting around being like, oh, thank God, I read Clown in a Cornfield and I feel seen. No one is fucking feeling like that. Like, no, it's queer baiting. It's insensitive. It's performative. It's lazy and I'm not here for it. Like, I'm not standing for it. Like, fuck that. Don't make your characters queer for the sake of them being queer. That's not representation. Like, it's not. We're not doing it. It's not happening. Like I said before, it's nothing against Caesar. Good for him. He has a novel. That's something to be really proud of. I, however, just don't fuck with it. I just don't at all. <laughs> and I don't appreciate the representation in the novel, so. Had those two characters not had their moment or whatever, then I would probably be fine with this book. But because of that, I don't like it. I don't want anything to do with it. It's cliche. The character development is like nil, zitch, nothing. The writing at times is a little bit choppy, a little bit clunky, a little bit cringy. The LGBTQ plus representation is actual trash and unacceptable so yeah don't recommend it i don't think you should buy it i think i'm gonna do a giveaway for my copy on patreon just because like i don't want it it doesn't belong in my collection so uh if you're interested watch out for that next i have dark halls by jeff menapache the rest of the books from here on out i don't hate this book however i didn't hate but i also didn't love <laughs> we're following a teacher 
He's just finished school, I believe, and he's looking for work. He applies at this school and he gets the job because nobody else wants to fucking work there because it's creepy, it's haunted. People say that there's like ghosts and demons and shit, but this guy doesn't believe in any of that. So he doesn't really care. However, as the weeks pass, stranger and stranger things start happening. He might have to come to terms with what he believes in and what he doesn't. For me, this is precisely middle of the road. The writing style is fine. The characters are fine. The plot was fine. Like there is nothing really exceptional about this book, but there's nothing especially horrible about it either. It doesn't offend me in any way. It's just fine. I've got almost no feelings about it. Besides the fact that the cover is telling me one thing and then the actual book was giving me an entirely different experience. There are maybe one or two scenes in this book with actually creepy kids, which is really disappointing. Like I, I bought this book because I wanted this little bitch. <laughs> is, it, is it offensive for me to call children bitches? Either way, I wanted this kid to freak me out. I wanted to be scared. By this little demon child and that didn't happen the whole book focused on adults who quite frankly are kind of boring don't really inspire much like admiration or hate at all like they're just middle of the road people even the backstory behind why the school is haunted why all of these things are happening was fine i didn't hate it but i didn't love it it was just fine I don't think I would recommend it, honestly. I think there are way better books. I don't want you to waste your time. And for me, I didn't get a lot out of this. Next, let's talk about Tenderness by Robert Colmier. This is a YA serial killer book. This is following two people. We're following a young girl. Her mom is just completely shitty. Her stepdad is really gross. Nobody really like takes her seriously. Nobody really thinks of her as anything but like good for like maybe like a hand job or something, which is kind of fucked up because she's like 15. Then we're also following another person named Eric who has been in a juvenile detention center for three years for murdering his mother and his stepfather. The girl, Lori, becomes like very fixated on Eric who kind of a serial killer. Like he's murdered more than just his parents. He's murdered other people, like little girls. Eventually these characters meet and it just becomes very weird and very uncomfortable. <laughs> After I finished this book, I didn't really know what to think about it. The characters for this book are kind of what's holding it together. They're super, super fascinating. Both characters have very distinct points of view. I think that's mostly what this novel is giving people. Clear from like the get go what these characters motivations are what they want and you're kind of rooting for them i'm much more connected with lori than i did with eric of course because eric's a fucking psychopath lori was just desperate for someone to fucking love her like desperate for someone to actually give a single flying fuck about anything that she says or does but like literally nobody gives a flying fuck other than the characters the ending is not expected like at all didn't see a fucking coming a million miles away. The only reason that this book isn't higher up is because the whole time I just wanted it to be more fucked up. I wanted it to be more dark. It kept shying away from it. Like it would show me a little glimpses and then just like back away slowly. Other thing that I think was one of the issues for me was that the whole book, there's not really any tension. There's not really any like suspense or mystery. It's all very sort of linear. When it's not linear, I could see it coming from like a mile away. You know what I mean? This is certainly better than like dark halls or corn in a cornfield or cold in a cornfield, whatever the hell it's called. I think, I think I would recommend it. Also, Kat gave this to me for my birthday and I'm very grateful. Thank you, Kat. Next, we have The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I can't find my copy of this literally anywhere. Don't know what happened to it. This is the second novel I've read from her and it's following a group of people who are at a wedding. We get glimpses into the present where somebody has been murdered and then we go back into the past to sort of piece together why and how this happened and who did it, you know? It's very much like Agatha Christie. It's very much like murder mystery, which we love. We love a good murder mystery. We love a whodunit. Now, I am a sucker for a good mystery. I love the nostalgia a bit and then also getting gl glimpses of these regular people who seem like they're just a bunch of normies, who seem like they're regular people. 
but behind everything you just learned about their really fucked up backgrounds. Everyone is a fucking mess. Make no lie about it, dude. Every single person on this earth under their happy go lucky exteriors are complete fucking disasters. Like seriously, I'm a disaster. You're a disaster. Everyone's a disaster. Anyway, <laughs> this besides the point. I don't know why I'm talking about that. Well, all of the characters in Lucy Foley's books, from what I can tell, are just really complex and they start off one way and you perceive them a certain way. And as the books go on or as the book goes on, it becomes more and more complicated and complex. The only thing that I don't like about this book, why I like it less than The Hunting Party is the ending. The ending of the book feels weird. All I'm gonna say is that at the end, the person who's done everything is somebody that you would never expect. People want to unravel the mystery, but how can they do that? Do you know? Either way, it's fun. Lucy Foley is really, really good. I'm really excited for her next book. Next, let's talk about Last Days by Brian Evenson. This is a detective thriller novel. Basically, we're following a dude who lost his hand, I believe, gets approached by this cult and they're like, listen, we want you to come, come to our little convent and help us out. And he's like, no, thank you. Thank you so much, but no, I'm not going to do it. Then they kidnap him. <laughs> this detective gets kidnapped by this cult and they're like, solve this murder mystery for us. And he's like, okay, I guess. And the novel kind of goes from there. This book is very weird. <laughs> the way that Evenson set up this cult, built their beliefs, built how they tear themselves is nuts and insane and kind of believable. I was reading it. I felt uncomfortable, of course. I was like, yeah, this cult probably exists somewhere. Like people are this fucking nuts. People are this fucking crazy that they would do this. It's kind of dreamlike in a way, this book because you're reading it and everything kind of seems hazy, but also at the same time, like a little bit dirty, a little grimy. You kind of feel like you're lost in a dream and it's not a good dream. It's more like a nightmare, actually. It's very much like a nightmare. <laughs> but it's a really cool effect, the tone of the book. And also, can I just say that the dialogue in this book is so good. The dialogue is what makes this book as good as it is. The way that the dialogue is crafted around everything. It's so fucking good. It's just the ending is so violent and so gory, but at the same time, it's like almost, it's almost like it's normalized. I didn't feel overwhelmed by it at all. It, I was just like, yeah, it's a fucking Tuesday, whatever. <laughs> the only thing that I don't like about this book is how little we know about the main character, Klein, this detective. Like, I don't know who the fuck this guy is. The entire book, he's very like monotone almost. It's very strange. And so had the book, I think, gone more into like, his motivation, into like how he was actually feeling, more about like who he is as a person, I probably would have liked it more. But either way, it's still fucking crazy. And I would recommend 100% that you read it, especially if you're into culty things. If you like cults, this is some good shit. This is good. The second to last book I'm gonna mention is House on Abigail Lane by Keelan Patrick Burke. Wow, he did it again, bitch. He's back at it again. I was afraid that I had just like fallen out of love with Keelan Patrick Burke's books. I was afraid that he was gonna just like keep letting me down. I didn't like anything that I was reading from him. This book is just, it just saved me. It completely saved me. This is a little novella about a house on Abigail Lane. This house has a very strange history where people will disappear completely. Basically, we're following the history of the house from I think the 50s until present day. I love, I loved this. It was so fucking good, so good. The world building is insane. I was legitimately afraid while I was reading this, mostly because it was night, <laughs> mostly because I'd been watching YouTube videos about ghost stories, so that wasn't helping me a lot, but I was still very creeped out by this. There's several scenes in this book where you're just like, ooh, ooh, I hate that. Some of the imagery is so strange and weird that you just like, you just feel uncomfortable with it and just, it just, ugh. Most of the book is written really, really well. Most of the book is really engaging. All of the characters that I was presented with, I was really into. 
or I wasn't into them, but like they were interesting. The only thing that I didn't like about this was that at certain points I felt myself like sort of drifting off in editing. They have this term mego, which stands for my eyes glazed over. At certain points of this book, my eyes sort of glazed over a bit. I was daydreaming and then I'd have to come back to it and read it all over again. So certain parts of it, very small parts of it, I felt kind of bored while reading it. But other than that, this is great. It's a lot of fun. The whole book is a whole ride. It's insane. And all I have to say is all hail the sunflower god. The last book that we're going to talk about is one that I buddy read with Alex from Hey Little Thrifter. We read together Slimer by Harry Adam Knight, I believe. This is a like vintage horror novel. It's very cut and dry. These young in their 20s type of people are stranded on this boat after I think the yacht that they were on just like sunk. They're stranded at sea for several days when they come across an oil rig out in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. And they're like, thank fucking God, dude, we found salvation. And they get on this oil rig and it's completely deserted. There's no one, no one around. And they're like, well, that's fucking weird. But either way, we're just not, we're not stranded on the ocean anymore. We're gonna get rescued. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Little do they know that there is a slime monster amongst the oil rig things. Let's do a little checklist, okay? We have a slime shape-shifting monster, check. We have characters who are so fucking hateable and so compellingly awful that you just that you're just wishing that they would get fucking eaten alive and that you could watch it happen. Check. We have some disturbing imagery and some goriness, like check. That's it. What else do you want? Like, what else do I want? <laughs> Nothing. I don't want anything else other than that. Like, this book was so satisfying in a way, but also really weird. Very weird. It kind of reminded me a little bit of The Ruins, where the characters are so awful. You hate them. You don't really care if they live or not. You're hoping that they don't, but you don't care. But at the same time, kind of want to keep watching to see what does happen because it's just so fascinating. That's how I felt about this book. The monster was really interesting. Descriptions of the shape-shifting. The scene with the fish tank was just so scary and so <laughs> creepy and it made me so happy. Trigger warnings for like misogyny. A lot of the characters, specifically one of them, is super misogynistic and totally a fucking douchebag. And then also trigger warnings for sexual assault and rape. I can't help but fuck with this book. It's ridiculous, but also at the same time, so entertaining and so fun. I loved it. I loved it. Those are all of the books that I read in September. A pretty slow reading month for me, to be honest, but also not a bad reading month. I'm very excited though to get to October to start reading all of the horror books that I had planned. I'm so excited. Let me know down below uh, if you read any of these books, what you thought of them. Let me know if you if you disagree with me about Clown in a Cornfield. We can talk about it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit. We talk about creepy shit. We talk about clowns on a cornfield and shit. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next one. Bye!